Hi, my name's Random Tuesday, and welcome to part one of my Aloy Nora Silent Hunter medium cosplay from Horizon Zero Dawn. In this video, I'm talking through everything between the shoulders and the tops of the knees, so tops and bottoms, body portions. If you're looking for information on greaves or bracers or wigs or other extremities, head over to part two. And definitely check out my website, randomtuesday.com, where you can get direct links to anything that I talk about in this costume, a link to the pattern for this costume, as well as the base Aloy costume, and other information, tutorials, and resources on this and many other cosplays. There's also a direct link down in the comments below. With that, let's get hunting. For the base layer of this costume, I purchased a pair of pleather leggings over on Amazon in the right sort of shade of brown. I made a couple of adjustments just to make them fit me better, but you could totally use them as is. Alternatively, you could definitely make them from scratch out of a pleather or even leather if you're feeling really extra. Uh, and with that, you could add all of those extra cool seam lines that she had on there, or you could even adjust a pair of leggings that you purchased. I decided this wasn't a place that I wanted to invest a lot of time on the cosplay because not a ton of it gets seen, uh, so I just just went with the plain leggings. A little thing to consider is that pleather is super hot and sweaty and doesn't breathe at all, so if you're wearing this all day at a convention, maybe consider something that's not pleather, like a cotton, uh, to help you breathe, or even just a pair of leggings. That's what I ended up wearing on the second day, so I was a slightly less sweaty Aloy at PAX than I was the previous day. For the top portion, I also purchased the base of this. It's just a plain brown cotton t-shirt. Uh, I cut off the neckline in order to hide it underneath the shirt that goes over the top of it. And then I added a section in a brown uh, linen fabric that gave it a slightly lighter contrast, just like you can see in the reference images, and also had that nice linen-y texture. The rope or net or whatever you wanna call it that's all over the Silent Hunter armor is made in the same way across the entire costume. I took two strands of yarn. I basically took a skein and crocheted using both ends of it to make it a double thick single crochet chain. It's super easy and quick to do and just a massively repetitive task. I used a variegated cotton yarn because I really liked the sort of color that it gave, meaning that it wasn't just one solid color, making it feel a little bit more natural dyed uh, as it would have been because they would not have had machine dyeing. To make the tassels, I then just just looped around strands of yarn around the knots or the intersections uh, and I just frayed those using a wire brush or comb, whatever you've got on hand is going to work, and trimmed them to the appropriate length. On a, across a lot of the costume, I also stitched down those intersections of the yarn as well as at the top and the bottom to really make them super secure so they stayed in the right sort of shape and didn't shift around. The next layer is her top. It's basically a small little crop top. Uh, Thankfully, it has a lot of raw edges. I found a really nice pleather that had a non-fabric backing to it and had a really nice texture over the top. And that's what I used for the bulk of the materials in this costume, as well as a handful of other pleathers for contrast in other locations. Uh, this pleather was great because it didn't have a fabric backing. It looks a lot more natural and I didn't have to worry about finishing the edges or turning them under and I could leave them raw like they were in the actual costume itself. Uh, the tassels on the bottom row, I just punched holes in this bottom section of it and then looped through the same way I did the tassels on all of the green and the yarn. The sleeves, again, these ones were stitched directly to here. And I used a little bit of wider stitching just to add, or a thicker thread, I should say, to add some decorative stitching around the top shoulder and armholes. The necklace, much like a lot of the netting, is also stitched in place, so when I lean, it doesn't move. And this is just made out of a series of different materials that match the aesthetic that I wanted to have as much as possible. So this is a strand of brown rubber. These are some uh, thin bolo cord. I used silicone tubing for these, the sort of craft tubing that you can get for a lot of bracelets. This cool cord that I found at the fabric store that was a very cool color and I have no idea where it came from. And then these little bits are made out of just blobs of warbler. I formed around the joints and then painted copper. This little blue fabric section here, which is where I hid all of the joins of the various different materials. For the skirt, 
flaps, <laughs> bottom section. Uh, I made four panels out of the same pleather that the top was made out of. It's that same double-sided pleather, so I didn't have to worry about making the underside look nice as well, or even double layering whatever pleather it was that I could find. I stitched those on just onto a strip of, ended up being bias tape, ribbon or something like that would work, just so that they all stay in place and nice and together. Basically form a skirt, wrap them around and snap them together in the front. You can find more information about how these pieces layer together as well as patterning for the net that goes on top of them over on my website where I have a pattern for this cosplay and also for the base alloy. Above the skirt sits the underbelt and then the overbelt and the underbelt I made out of a couple layer fabric. This one was a little bit tricky and I went through a few different iterations but I ended up settling on uh, making the edge the fake fur edge using the same tassel material that I did around the top of the top. Uh, I spent a long time looping it around a piece of yarn, frayed that yarn, and then glued it in place onto felt, and then sandwiched that between two pieces of vague look, uh, sort of fake suede, uh, and added some extra texturing and paint to kind of make it look a little bit less solid single color. For the belt, you could totally buy one. I ended up making one out of a couple of strips of pleather glued together and I used some fabric uh, leather paint to paint them in order to get a better shade of brown. Still not as sturdy as I would have liked them. This is a place where I'd actually recommend using real leather because it'll just be a little bit sturdier and a little bit stronger. The pouches were made out of two different shades of leather. One that was a different double-sided leather that I also found so that I didn't have to worry about finishing the edge of the pouches, and then one that was unfortunately not a double-sided leather, but just a slightly darker leather that I found. They're a pretty basic pouch construction, so it's a single long piece in the back, a shorter piece in the front, and then just an edge piece that forms like a nice U that goes all the way around. In order to get them to stay uh, a little bit more closed when the, the top is down, I just ran some elastic um, around the edge of it, kind of through it, and then tightened it a little bit so I can still open them super easily because it's elastic. For all of the pouches, I then added a loop wide enough to stick the belt through on the back. For the biggest pouch, I actually added two loops so that it was just a little bit more secure and I could run the belt through more easily. And the embroidery on this one pouch was just done by machine. It's a zigzag stitch with really short stitch length. Even though they specify in the uh, resource document, which I really recommend looking at, it's a really great insight into both what they were thinking with the costume and also some great solid reference images for a lot of the props and accessories. Less useful if you're not making the base costume. But they specify that there are no closures on these pouches, but they don't flap around like this in the game. So I added a snap to them. Um, on the inside, I just sew it directly to the pouch, but on the outside, because I didn't want the stitching to show because she has no closures on these pouches, uh, I sewed the snap to a piece of fabric and then glued that piece of fabric to the inside of the pouch so that they can snap close. The quiver is made over a folded up section of leather and then just stitched around the edge. Uh, using that wider cord that I used on the top as well. And then I added the decorative pieces to the quiver, which are sections of EVA foam and warbler glued directly to the quiver and a couple of strands of like braided pleather that I found and I just stuck two of them together to make it that right sort of thickness, run it through those sections of, of EVA foam metal bits and just glue them directly to the quiver. And for the weird metal circle, I just used a metal ring, the same one that I end up using on the belt portion. The arrows are made out of wooden dowels with craft foam fake feathers at the tip of them. Thank you to Sour Fruit Junkie or Step MHC. She helped me make those. She's great. Rope is just rope that I purchased online. I used about 20 feet of rope and I used a tea bath in order, I just dunked it in a bunch of tea in order to get the, uh, the color to be a little bit yellow or a little bit browner and not quite so bright white. And above all of that, uh, we put this another loop of, of cording. It's that same sort of, I assume, decorative climbing cord, uh, which has that kind of nice carbon fiber look to it. This one does need to snap on, so I hide the, the snap in the blue section, and that takes a little bit of, of fiddling, but you get the snap section out, and then I snap it together, and then I hide it. And that just loops around my waist, above the belt, um, and over the overbelt. 
Thank you so much for watching part one of my Aloy Silent Hunter cosplay. If you're looking for the rest of the cosplay information, head over and check out part two. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for information uh, and notifications on when I have new videos out. You can also watch me live on twitch.tv slash random Tuesday, where I'm frequently working on cosplays and I'm always happy to answer questions. Check out my website, randomtuesday.com, for pattern links, tutorials, and resources. And as always, lastly, but never leastly, thank you to each and every one of my patrons over on Patreon who made this video and this cosplay a reality. If you're able to, any support over there is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.